Yo, welcome to the TBA Trading Mentorship. And in today's video, although I promised that I was going to jump into trends in this video, but that's going to be in the next video. So this video is just going to be all about um revision on what we've done or what we've learned so far. So don't worry. By next week, we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at um structures in full like, like structures, what structures are, how to identify. Um, up trend down trend on the likes and the likes yeah i also found out i actually just noticed it recently that this cursor is black throughout i'm very very sorry about that it's actually not black now i don't know i think it is the recorder that is making it black so i'm just going to mean probably before the next video um by then we're going to be using trading view throughout so i'll most likely change my trading view from dark mode to light mode to make it easier for you guys to see so in today's video, we're just going to look at a revision from the very beginning, what is Forex, then down to what is trend. Um, so it's just going to be like a very short revision. So what is Forex again? Forex is um, um, it's an acronym for foreign exchange, and it's just about the exchange of one, one currency to the other, she gets. Then um, we have stuff like this called um, USD, which are called, actually, not, I think I'll be expecting us to see that at the same time. Currency pairs. I want a currency pair. This is the pairing of two different currencies together. And one currency is the base currency. Another one is the quote currency. These are the names for most of them. Um, you know, I think it's very nice for you guys to learn this stuff. Personally, I like calling my own pairs AUD, USD, GPP, JPY. Calling the symbols. But some people like calling the currencies. For instance, some people like saying Aussie dollar or Australian dollars. That's the currency. Australian dollars, or well, some people like using the nickname Aussie dollars. Um, especially for they are, if they don't really use it for most of them. For you see, um, Japanese yen or oh, sorry, um, um, USD card. No, 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 no. Um, I think the cable GPP USD cable, the record, the a lot of people call GPP USD the cable, um, Swiss dollar, um, Aussie dollars, um, yen pounds. Uh, pound yen yeah thank you some stuff like that stuff like that so it depends on the kind of forex trader that you meet so different people like using different ways to call what about what about suits them i'm very very sure all of you like watching this video are not going to call um this currency pairs the same way i call it so it's what about what so you just have to learn it so that if someone tells you it's your Aussie dollar you're not going to be confused she gets and it's kind of making it look more professional you understand so the next thing we'll look at what types of traders and types of traders we talked about the day traders and um, type of claim traders classified by time frame which is the scalpers day traders swing trader position traders aka investors we also talk about um classification of analysis type that is um a classification of for for traders by analysis type that's fundamental analysis technical analysis and currently they say there's something called sentimental analysis i'm not interested but i think it's it there is so i'm also talking about classification of forex traders by strategy that is the technical aspect because i'm not i don't really know much about fundamental um traders so and we have the indicators based traders we have the naked price action traders we have the mixed price action traders and we said the indicators based traders are traders that uses only indicator <coughs> to <coughs> sorry about that to analyze their shards i'm talking about um naked price action traders are traders that uses no indicators and only forex trading tools and why mix is someone that uses both so scalpers i forgot to um say a little bit about this scalpers these are traders that get in the market get out get in get out get in get out get out they just want to get quick money and get out by the traders these are traders that can hold a trade for up to a day 24 hours swing traders are traders that hold trades for more than a day and um, position traders are traders that or day traders swing traders can open can hold trades for more than a day to a week two weeks probably a month why swing traders are tr investors they can trade for years so <clears throat> the next thing we talked about um, was their pros and cons yeah, you can check out the first video to check that one out so we talked about what was the next chapter talking about forex trading sessions and these are the times when Different forex session are open. So we have the Sydney session, the Tokyo session, London session, and the New York session. So the Tokyo session is, I think, it's also called the Asian session. So personally, I actually trade 
using the New York, London, and Asia. And he, yeah, something like that, something like that. So this is um, the time, the time, the time. Yeah. Then let me talk about is a pip. I would say pip is an acronym for point in percentage. This is the smallest amount of movement a currency pair can move. A pip is how we measure the profits and losses in forex market. In physics, the length of a body is measured in meters, and now in forex, the movement of price is measured in pips. It's as simple as that. So we'll talk about how to calculate pips. We'll talk about how the fifth decimal number. Oh yeah, this one. The pip is called a pipette, and it is most likely irrelevant. So we only take um we only take note of the first four decimal numbers. That is the first four decimal places in which the fourth decimal place is um change in the fourth decimal place um means change in one pip or a unit pip. Change in the third decimal place uh, is um change in tenth pip. That is if you change this to six. 1.0660 then that is gonna be um it means that um euro usd just bought 10 pips that is plus 10 pips change in the second decimal place is 100 units and first decimal place is a thousand units so we'll talk we'll also talk about um how to calculate they will talk about the aberrations which comes in jpyps and um the third um the most gpyps have three decimal places and we said the third decimal place is the pipette which is irrelevant and we start counting our pips from the second decimal place just like we did for euro usd we also talked about how to calculate lot size we're talking about the different types of lot size the standard lot size money lot size micro lot size and nano lot size so we we'll talked about the three major lot size which is the standard mini and micro and we said you can use this to calculate your profit and your loss using this formula the value per pip the number of pip moved and the lot size all this is going will help you to calculate the number um your profit and your loss so even before you've made a profit and loss although it might not be exactly what for instance you may calculate a profit of 50 dollars and end up getting 49 dollars or 48 dollars yes different brokers probably take out commissions, swap fees, and the likes, and the likes, and the likes. So overnight fees, as if your trade is going, it's, it's going to last for eight, more than a day, take out overnight fees, and the rest. So it might not be exact, but it's going to be approximately the same thing. So um, the next thing we talk about was leverages, and we'll talk about how leverages help with Forex traders to purchase more than what we can actually purchase in a financial market how would our brokers help us buy more than our buying power so and this this helps us to place trades reasonably in fact i think i told you guys that um to place the smallest trade in the forex market you actually need a thousand dollars and for instance when you are placing and for instance you have a 500 dollar trading account you need a minimum of one thousand dollars to play the trade, to buy the smallest unit. So, are you going to trade that with just five hundred dollars? So that's where brokers come in, and that's where leverage comes in, and it helps you guys to buy more than you can actually buy in the forex market. So the next thing we talked about was terminologies used, talk about margin, P, everything is written here, lot size, um, currency pairs, trend, and the rest here, yada, yada. So the next thing we talked about was um. MT4 and MT, sorry trading view breakdown. We didn't do anything about the MT4 breakdown. If you if you if you guys really want the MT4 breakdown or the trading view mobile version breakdown, just let me know in the comment section below and you're gonna see it. So next thing we talk about and or you can just check out these links right here. So next one talk about was the forex analysis. I think that was the last video. We talked about the fundamental forex analysis, which I don't really use. I'm also talking about the technical forex analysis, and in which we use different kind of stores, different kind of tools to analyze the forex market. To analyze the forex market, and we also use stuff like candlesticks. We use stuff like trends, ICT money concepts, and I told you guys in the last video that. We're not really going to jump into ICT money concepts fully. We're just going to check it out a little bit. So we're going to use more of smart um, TBX smart 
funny concept. I know that looks kind of sound like I stole ICT money concept, but now nah, I didn't steal ICT money concept. You're gonna understand why I call it TBX money concept very, 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 very soon. So in this, um, the next chapter we we'll talk about what is a candlestick and talk about the difference between a bullish candlestick and bearish candlestick and we said a bullish candlestick is a candlestick in which you open is below the close and a bearish candlestick is a candlestick in which the close is below the open that's a very simple difference and we're also talking about how this series of candlestick can form a trend then we're talking about um this candlestick which is the ama candlestick says yeah um, I wrote this, a lot of story about the Amma candlestick here, so you can just read it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next we're talking about is the trend. Um, the trend, we said, okay, I didn't read this to you in the last video. Or did I? I think I didn't. A trend is a summary of the overall direction price move in a period. That is, this is the summary of the overall direction price move in a particular time frame. So in a one minute time frame, if all the candles the average of the sun or let's say yeah the average of the candles you see is moving in an upward direction then in that one minute time frame price is currently in an uptrend so the reason why i said in a given period here is because price can be in an uptrend in a daily time frame and be in a downtrend in the one hour time frame so that's why i said in a given period that is in a certain time frame but in summary <laughs> is well he's gonna talk about in this chapter oh okay so i'm talking about the three different types of of, of trends which is the uptrend which is the bullish market downtrend which is the bearish market and the sideways trend which is the ranging market so um uptrend is when price keeps printing higher eyes and lower eyes that is when price keeps printing eyes that are higher than the previous eyes and low that is higher than the previous low it is called an uptrend and um uh, that is see boom. why um downtrend is the direct opposite when price keeps printing lows that are lower than the previous eye and losing that lower than the previous low it's called a downtrend why a ranging market is like the name implies a market that is ranging giving us equal eyes and equal lows then i said something um in the previous video that mm -hmm. this is everything is moving in a cycle price can move from an uptrend to a downtrend from a downtrend to back from uptrend from a down uptrend to a, a breaking to a, a ranging market ranging market to an uptrend like that in circle in circle in circle from one trend to the another to another and the like the likes so but i forgot to mention something in the previous video when price changes trend that is when price move from an uptrend to a downtrend it is called a break of structure it is called a break of structure or a change of character or a break in market structure. Don't worry, we are going to talk about this in the very next video. I promise. So that's all about this um, week. Um, that's all about this book. I can't believe I'm finally, finally going to finish this book today. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Enjoy your weekend.